What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And I hope you enjoyed yesterday's video where we had that great clutch of green tree pythons. And we got 13 awesome eggs that are in the incubator now. And guess what? We have no ball pythons in the incubator anymore. They're, we're done. We're done for 2022. I can't even believe it. We just set up the final clutch that hatched about two weeks ago. And uh, the incubator is bare except for the uh, green tree pythons. We're going to be in the snake room today and uh, cleaning some stuff. And you know, Fridays are always a little busy here. We're trying to do housekeeping stuff. We actually had to make move around a lot of snakes to make room for these last few babies that we had in the incubator. We have a full house here now. And uh, hopefully for Christmas, we'll start putting some snakes up. I know it's been slow. A lot of people notice it's been slow. Sales have been down for most uh, people selling reptiles that I talk to. And that's, that's normal. We're in a little bit of a recession right now. So... Don't worry about it. People get their Christmas money. They're going to be buying snakes. They'll get their tax money after the New Year's. They'll be buying snakes. That's what we That's what we do, right? If you love snakes, you buy snakes with the money that you get. And uh, yeah, it, the economy ebbs and flows. That's just the way it goes. So guys, have faith. You're going to be selling plenty of snakes come the New Year. That's just the way it goes. That's the industry. Anyway, so what I wanted to say basically was that sometimes the most fun videos that I do are the ones where I'm kind of just looking through my snakes and moving stuff around. We sh reshuffled so many different boas and I was like, oh my God, I forgot I had these. Cause I was just kind of, sometimes I have boas that are just in the drawer and I'm just growing them up and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna keep these. And one of the snakes, you know, that I didn't even realize that I was holding back, I had three of. So we'll be putting one of those up. You're gonna get a chance to check that out and anything else that might strike my fancy. So stay tuned. Let's take a look and see what we got. Look what we have. Every day I always show you some new animals on my property. Today we got chickens. They're visiting from uh, one of my neighbor's houses. You know, I was debating getting a chicken coop. Actually, I don't even want chickens. I, want, I really want quail. I think quail are cooler and they're more relevant, but I know what's gonna happen. My kids will fall in love with them. I'll fall in love with them and I won't wanna feed them to the snakes. So maybe I should get chickens and just eat the eggs. <laughs> <laughs> They're kind of cool. They're kind of cool, these chickens. The, the problem is if they breed and you get roosters, the roosters make a ton of noise in the, in the morning. They'll wake up at the crack of, you know what? I think there's a rooster right there in the, uh, in the brush. Yep, there's the rooster. There's a little, uh, I don't know, I think those are called bantam chickens. I don't know, there's a little, pretty cool looking little guy. How many chickens, I guess you gotta get a bigger chicken because you wanna at least have good eggs, right? There's a lot of birds around here. It's chicken day here at the Palumbo Ranch. I don't know what they're doing on my property. They must like my grass better than over in the other. Maybe we got more insects over here. <laughs> oh boy, can you imagine if my berms were out here? They'd have a field day with these guys. <laughs> I just heard the rooster crow. You, you all guys all know what the rooster sounds like, but. This is what you hear in the morning. <laughs> oh, there he is. Right on cue, a real performer for the camera. All right, try to do a little training with the water monitors. Some of my albinos, which I think could potentially be a male, I'm not sure. He's a little more social. Usually the males are more social than the females. So this, and we always thought this was the male. And we'll go over how to sex these things at a later date when they get a little older. But he's basking. That's that's a ceramic heat emitter he's got. We'll do a little digesting of his food. And I'm just basically sitting here with my hand in the cage. I'm not approaching him. I'm gonna let him come to me. And every day I try to do a little spend a little time with him. So he gets more and more used to me, my smell. The fact that I'm the guy who cleans his water, 
and puts his food in every day. We actually just brought some scrambled eggs over to him today. The other day he had a little mouse he ate, so they're eating well, they're growing. I'm really digging these guys, you know, I think I'll really like them even better once I can socialize them. But I'm, I'm very patient. Hey, I was a bodybuilder. You gotta be very patient to do that. You, you basically eat six to eight times a day, every day. You go to the gym five days a week. You gotta make sure you sleep enough, take all your vitamins, and, do, and repeat the same exact thing every single day. It's very boring. But if you do it every day diligently, you build muscle and you can burn fat and you can change your body. And it's the same thing with reptiles. You gotta, you clean your snakes, you give them, you know, fresh water, you feed them once a week, maybe, if they're snakes, lizards, you know, more often. And you just repeat that over and over and over again. And you build a relationship with your animals. You might even get them to breed, you know? And that's just a matter of repeating the same thing. Animals like repetition, they like to have routines, and they respond better to that. So you just have to be patient because just when you're about to give up, that's when you make the most progress. All right, um, no breeding action here yet, but this is my double head snow female carpet that, I gave, that didn't go last year for me. And this is our snow now. They both just shed, actually. So, this is a good time not to feed them now because they're both not in shed cycle. Hopefully, we'll start doing some, we'll see some breeding action from them. And maybe we'll get some, uh, get some snow babies later this uh, next year. <laughs> Man, when I think about how th this girl produced this boy years, a couple years ago now. She's a 13, and the fact that I'm actually breeding him to breeding him to her now is just cool, really cool. And hopefully we'll produce some more snows because they're just gorgeous. He's definitely prowling, looking. He's ready. I don't think she, I don't know if she's ready yet, but he's definitely ready to go. All right, the annulated bowers are eating. Pavel just fed him, and they're hanging all. They got them hanging. This one's got a mouse hanging out of its mouth. Only one didn't eat who was in shed, so pretty cool. It's Friday feeding here. On, we do mice on Friday. We do rats on Tuesday. Pretty cool. Love those annulates. These annulates are becoming like some of my favorites, actually, believe it or not. Really cool. All right, I'm putting my hypo bread lead, which and it seems to be a, what we call a double copy hypo, male. Putting him outside here with the female. He was inside only because he hadn't eaten because he was with that female so long that I think he was just, all he was interested in doing was breeding her. So I had to like give him like two weeks off and I, I fed him two days ago and he ate. So I, I feel better now bringing him outside and I'm gonna winter these guys together because obviously not only does the female need to get cool, the male needs to get cooled down too. So this cage is more than big enough, obviously, for both of them. So and they do like each other. But once again, he was not eating. She would eat, but he would not eat. So I felt that was time to separate them. And you might notice that too. Sometimes with the boas, I notice too. Usually boas always like to eat. When the males stop eating, it's like, all right, time to separate them. You might have to give them two weeks off, three weeks off before they actually start eating again, but they will. So he's gonna love it out here. He has never been out here, only she's been out here. It was freezing cold this morning. It was like, it was in the low 50s. And they were all up by the heat. The heat turns on here at about 60 degrees, just so it's, they don't get too, too cold. And even the, even the olives were um, not doing anything this morning. It was, they were up in the heat box there, but now they're moving around, and it, believe me, it's not its not warm by any means. It's probably 70 degrees right now. But they're happy, like in the 60s and 70s. 50s, you know, they're, they're gonna try to seek some heat probably, but uh, they're all out, all the olives are out now. And look at my other pair of uh, olives. Like I said, it's 69 degrees out. They're just, look at, look at, look at this one sticking its head out of the, the hide box. 
believe me, they're not coming out to see me. They could care less if I'm here. They just, they see the sun. They're trying to maybe get some sunlight. I actually feel a couple drips of rain right now um, dropping on my head. But it's probably, yeah, it might start raining. I feel, I, you feel raindrops, Pablo? Kind of. Yeah. So they're loving it. They love the, the this kind of, you know, weird low barometric pressures. <laughs> Look at this guy. They, I'm telling you, these snakes have really, really, they're loving these outdoor enclosures. I, I am so happy I got them in them. I really do. They're really enjoying the fact that they can climb and, and do whatever they want, pretty much. And they have full access. And I won't feed these guys for two months. You know, maybe even longer. Because I want them to winter now, and, and they're going to... It's cold out. No reason to feed them at this point. They ate already for the year. Hopefully they're going to start breeding at some point. You know, and... Uh, Really, what it's going to amount to is when the girl, the female who's sticking her head out of there, when her body, some trigger goes off, and she starts developing follicles, this male will become receptive to her. She'll be receptive to him, and they'll start breathing. And that's, and that's hopefully going to be what we need. <laughs> I haven't had any luck indoors with these guys. Crutchfield's been telling me for years, put them outside. Put them outside. I just didn't. It wasn't. Wasn't the right time, I guess, you know. I just didn't have the right, I didn't meet the right person to do the right cage that I wanted. My friend Chase Anderson made these cages. They're freaking awesome. And uh, they're outside now. All right, I wanted to show you a really, really cool boa that I am going to be putting up for sale. I haven't really told anyone or showed anyone of these boas. I have actually three sisters. I was going to keep them as my holdbacks. But I'm just going to keep two, probably. I'm going to put one up for sale. This is an IMG Motley, which we know when you combine IMG and Motley, you get a black, jet black snake, right? The reason this is not jet black is because it's also VPIT positive albino. So it's the VPI line of T positive albino. And you can see it's preventing the snake from getting totally black, which is what Motley IMG does. Remember, the IMG gene is the increasing melanistic gene. It means the melanin inc increases and accumulates as the snake ages. And when you combine that with Motley, which is a dark morph already, you get a very, very dark black snake. Uh, but this VPIT positive albino line is removing some of the melanin. It's not allowing the melanin to completely accumulate. Look at that crazy eye. What a beautiful, what a beautiful girl this is. Well started, early 2021, so she's about six, She's about 18 months old. She's got really, really good size in her already. And she eats like a champion. The snake will, will down a medium rat, no problem. And she'll probably be up to breeding size in maybe two years, I would think. I mean, she's, she's gonna be a big girl. So if you're looking for a really, really powerhouse female, if you like IMG, you like contrast and all kinds of weirdness, look at that. Look at how cool that looks striped tail from the motley the circles that are filled in now with black because of the img gene she's just you know knock your socks off beautiful so hit me up if you're interested i don't know if i'm going to put up this on morph marker if i might just wait for someone to contact me because i have a feeling someone's gonna see this video and want this baby girl all right guys that's gonna do it for today here at palumbo's pythons and boas uh, I want to give a big shout out to Ozzy from Ozzy Boyd's. What a great snake he put up. I don't know if you guys saw it. It was a Pastave, which is a Pastel Mojave, Orange Dream, Desert Ghost Clown. What a wacky, freaky looking snake this is. I'll put a picture of it up. Ozzy makes some amazing stuff. Really thinks outside the box, just off the charts. I love the way, I don't know, I just love the way the snake looks. It's just really a really obscure, weird-looking clown. Good combination, Ozzy. Hope you guys liked today's video. Hopefully you got to, you know, I, you know, you see I'm trying to work with the motor monitors. I'm trying to train them. Uh, we got so much going on here. I got angulated boas that hopefully will breed this year. We saw some lock in action. Uh, they've been eating still, though, so that who knows if they're ready to go or not. We got the outdoor enclosures are going great. As you can see, man, these olive pythons and bread, breadly python, they love the cold. 
man, did I not realize how much I was, I thought I was being cool. I was getting the, the temps down in my, in my snake room to 70 degrees, spending a fortune on lowering the air conditioning that much in the winter. <laughs> my wife was going crazy. I could have just put them outside. I should have listened to Tom Crutchfield three years ago, but everything happens in due time. And in, hopefully these all pythons will respond to the cold weather and maybe give us some eggs and some babies later next year. I hope you guys have a great weekend planned and, uh, don't eat too much. Don't drink too much. Have fun. And we'll see you back again Monday morning. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications. Hit the like button. I'll see you back Monday morning.